Well, hello, it's Cliff here from Down Under. Here I am beside Thread Express waving the Thread Express flag. I've got big news coming up on this. I can't give you details now because it might not fit in with the timeline of you viewing this video. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about tiny two inch chucks. And did you see my recent video about a two inch? tiny chuck review well these videos won't make any sense unless you've seen that introduction video so i bought another tiny two inch chuck and i have done modifications to the original one and made it into a stepped jaw lantern chuck internal step jaws and external step jaws that allows you to hold all sorts of oddball small parts and then i bought this another two inch chuck and made a mandrel for it as well and pulled it apart and did some improvements to it on the scroll teeth and uh, remachined the jaws and there's some details in that video on how to improve these little chucks so i think this first video will be about improving these little two inch chucks and then I'll do a follow-up video talking about modifying a two-inch chuck to have steps on the inside and the outside of the jaws and a little thrust pin inside that turn it into a step jaw lantern chuck. Well, here I am with two-inch chuck number two. And you're probably wondering, why did I buy another one? This is the original. And I have modified it, as I mentioned in the previous video into a lantern style chuck so that I can grip headed parts like screws and pins and punches and ejector pins from behind um, and while I was doing that modification I began to really appreciate what good value this little chuck is apart from the couple of faults that I described in the scroll contact and the cutaway jaws and I began to realize that if I bought another one, I could actually rectify both of those problems. So I ordered another one. So this video is going to be about how I'm going to rectify those issues, or at least improve on them. So let's first talk about modifying this new chuck. You can see it's got ridiculously deep cutouts in the jaws. But I found during the modification that I can machine the jaws away because they are not case hardened. They're through hardened and tempered back to a machinable hardness. Have you watched the previous video? Because if you haven't, have a quick look at that. That'll this won't make sense otherwise. I'm going to, I don't want to repeat myself too much or this video will be too long. Um, watch the previous video a couple of videos ago and you'll see me discussing this in detail. So I'm going to machine a lot of that inner surface of the jaw away so that we have less of a cutout. And the other problem is the scroll here contacts on the, see if I can show it there, see the scroll coming around and contacting, let's just take this down a bit, okay see there the scroll of the, this knurled part scroll is contacting on the jaw scroll teeth but it doesn't contact on them very well there's only a very small amount of contact if you have a look at a bigger chuck jaw this is a a much bigger chuck jaw you can see there it doesn't look so obvious now yeah that's showing it so you can see there the teeth are very much narrower there and, and wider there. So it's an asymmetrical profile designed to optimize the contact area into a fairly big arc there. But the problem is with these uh, cheaper miniature chucks, they haven't gone to that trouble. And it's just a symmetrical little oval of a tooth that gives a very narrow contact patch. I mentioned that in the previous video. So what I'm going to do now is put some lapping paste on the scroll and lap down those little oval teeth so that I don't get a tiny spot of contact 
but I get a bigger patch of contact. Because if I don't do that before I use it, what will happen is that the hardened teeth will cut into the softer scroll and will ruin the potential of the chuck. But if I catch it now before I use it and I put some lapping compound on there, that will bed into the softer scroll and lap the hardened teeth. And then I'll get a bigger patch of contact. Then I can clean off the lapping compound and machine the jaws away and they will stay more concentric because there's a bigger patch of contact on those scrolled teeth. So I'm holding the little chuck in a bigger chuck on the bench. I've put some 600 grit wheeler lapping compound on the scroll and you can hear it's making that grinding sound. I can push the jaws outwards so that they bear against that little uh, the teeth on the jaws bears against the scroll and now I can just work it backwards and forwards putting a bit of pressure on the scroll in different positions and it should lap a little contact patch where it's contacting on the teeth and when I look at it when I pull it apart and clean it and look at it I should see a gray area representing the patch that's contacting and it should be a bigger area than if I didn't do this hopefully that makes sense to you so I'm just going to work away now off camera for um, five minutes and just do some lapping of those jaw teeth uh, I'm trying to show you now, I just lapped it for a few minutes, hopefully you can see there that the uh, different coloured zone, yeah just there, there's a, at least a third of the tooth profile now has got that uh, lapped surface, so that's a much bigger contact area. I only lapped it for a few minutes, I didn't want to do it too long because I was worried the lapping paste would start to migrate into the wrong areas of the chuck and wear it in those areas. So it works a little bit back to front with lapping materials. Um, the grit embeds or sticks into the softer material, that's the scroll in this case, and then stays stationary in the softer material where it's embedded and cuts away at the harder material which is the jaw teeth and that's the way round we want it. So you always need to think of the grit sticking to the soft and cutting the hard. Um, is that what you want? Is that desirable? I've been using a, uh, I think it's a silicon carbide grip or an aluminium oxide. I think it's a silicon carbide. Diamond would cut much more quickly and aggressively but the problem is that it's so hard that it probably won't break down very well and any bits that are left stuck in the surface of the scroll, if I can't get them out with kerosene and compressed air and so on, they could stay in there and wear the chuck out quite rapidly. Whereas any little bits of silicon carbide or aluminium oxide is a much softer type of abrasive and it will break down and eventually um, lose its cutting action, hopefully before too much damage is done. If well I've cleaned it out, put some whey oil on it and put it back together. You can just see one of the uh, jaw teeth there. See how it's almost half sort of matte grey there. If I bring the um, scroll around you can see it's just contacting there. And it just feels really nice and silky smooth. Now I've hopefully got all of the grit out of it and it's just got oil in it. And I guess the better surface finish has also improved the feel of it. It feels really silky smooth now. Um, so hopefully it, that will be a, a step up from what it was. Now I can set up and machine the inside of the jaws out to remove the depth of those grooves. So I've set the mandrel up concentric in my floating three jaw chuck. So I can dial that in concentric <clears throat> and I can start to check other parts of the chuck to see if it is concentric. See that's the back of the body that's threaded onto the little spindle. 
and that's pretty good, you know, better than a hundredth of a millimeter. Let's check some of the other aspects of the chuck. So far, everything I've checked on this little chuck has been quite accurately machined. See if I can show you the slideways of the jaw slide without getting my head in front of the camera. I'll probably mess this up. So we're running on about zero there. Yeah, you can see that. Come around to the next one. Uh, yep, yeah, about zero. So they're not only the same height, uh, yeah, the dial indicator's not a very good fit, but I think that's pretty good in there. I probably need a smaller stylus tip. And then have a look at the concentricity. I've just dialed in the Arbor uh, concentric. We just have a little bit of contact there, go anti clockwise. Look at that, the body of the I'll check the face now. It's pretty good. I mean, it's not your normal cheap Chinese reject with wildly varying inaccuracies that's been pulled out of the scrap bin and sold on AliExpress by some unscrupulous vendor. This is, as far as I can see, an accurately made little part. And there's a lot of critical machining in there. high-speed steel but just manages to cut that groove in the end of the jaws that will accept a ring. So the idea now is to fit a little ring on the end of the jaws so when I tighten the chuck on that ring I can bore through the ring and bore the inner jaw surface, clamping surface, if you've seen my other videos on fix your three jaw, you'll be familiar with the process. You can see the same ring is there on the three jaw that's in the chuck. So I do this to all of my chuck jaws. So I've got those grooves machined in the end there. I've got this little ring that I've made up. It doesn't need to be anything fussy, it's just acting as a resistance against the jaws, so the jaws splay outwards at the front in a bell mouth fashion. That's the dimensions there. So you can see it's a 30 millimeter effective ring diameter with a 25 inner and it goes into those little grooves in the end of the jaw. So when you tighten up, tighten it up, the jaws splay outwards and you can machine the jaws concentric and parallel in their as tightened position. Normally with a, a larger chuck the jaws are case hardened and ground and you really need to use an internal grinding wheel and a tool post grinder because they're glass hard um, but in this case the jaws are hardened and tempered through to around about 40 Rockwell C as far as I can see and that's a hardness that you can bore with tungsten carbide. There's a little insert boring bar that I'm using for this. Well I've machined off about nearly a millimetre off the jaw surface, comparing that with the original which is about two millimetres deep. I'm not sure how far to go. If I go too far I can't grip on a small diameter and I'd have to re-machine the uh, angle on the sides of the jaw and I would lose a bit of length of jaw. So I'm trying to find the best compromise. That might be about right there. 
So what makes this modification possible is that the jaws are not case hardened but are through hardened and tempered. One of the jaws here I've just put it in the vise and you can see this is the portion that I've ground out three or four millimeters deep and I can test the steel to see that it's still quite hard even down that deep. If it was case hardened it would be quite soft Here's a piece of mild steel and I've got this testing tool which is a piece of P20 steel and I can scratch mild steel with it quite deeply and easily but I can't scratch down at that depth but that I've ground down below the case with this P20 steel which is around about 30 Rockwell C so that means that the jaw is at least 30 Rockwell C. I'm hoping it's a little harder, I'm hoping it's around 40 but it may only be about 30 Rockwell C which is the hardness and toughness of a high tensile steel. So the jaws are not as hard as you'd really like they'd be better if they were case hardened but then I wouldn't be able to make these modifications. So the jaws on the new chuck that I've modified I've machined the surface off to get a much bigger surface area and remove some of the depth of those grooves and obviously I've previous to that I've lapped the scroll surface to get a bigger contact patch. Well with that amount machined I can still grip down to a two millimeter diameter without modifying the jaws any further and it's pretty concentric. Of course there's other factors that affect the concentricity, for example the how concentric the center line of the scroll spiral is to its rotational center and how much clearance the bearing diameter of the scroll spiral have that all affects its concentricity even if you precision machine the inside of the jaws and you have errors in the scroll you're going to get run outs on diameters that are different than the ring diameter that you machine them to. So you still really need to float the chuck where I can float this big chuck on its back plate um, for a final dial in if I'm doing high precision work. Well thanks for watching that video. I hope you found something useful in there. If you did please give me the like thumbs up and uh, if if you are not already subscribed, you might want to consider subscribing. And stay tuned and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.